Hey, colors out there. This is Nathan. Uh, today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, well, not too different. I'm going to be coloring and talking as usual. Today, the uh, project we're working on is the cover to collected edition of the webcomic I've been working on template. Um, it's going to be for uh, printed trade paperback. Uh, we have a Kickstarter starting up on August 14th for it. Uh, I'll be I'll be talking a little bit more about that as I go through. Uh, first of all, I just want to go ahead and start coloring. Um, I have like a rough idea how I want to do it. Uh, I'm sure some of you saw um, last couple of videos talking about mood and symbolism and color, and uh, kind of really wanted to introduce that into this uh, into this piece. Um, I just bring a little bit more life to it. Instead of just coloring them regular, it's like, oh, two people. Um, so on the, the left-hand side, we have alpha. On the right-hand side, we have beta. Uh, and kind of what I'm thinking, because what we've seen so far, alpha is the bad guy. <laughs> Antagonist, I guess you could say. And beta... Uh, is working for the good guys, and to contrast those two, we'll have Alpha with a warm background, uh, just kind of show a little bit of danger and everything. Be uh, more in reds, and then uh, Beta on the right hand side. I was thinking we'll do like in cool colors, but then in the story things get a little, a little muddy. You know, maybe maybe Alpha isn't such a bad person after all. And the, the people that Beta is fighting for, maybe they're the bad people. So I kind of wanted to introduce a little bit of that into, into the colors. And I was thinking, what if we do warm background on the left and cool color on the right. But then we put the characters, we'll switch them up. And I think that'll help the balance of them, of the piece as well. With the warm colors, warm colors, and then cool colors, cool colors. And then, let's see, I can kind of see, and then like the, the logo goes up here, and then set the credits here. Um, so that's that's the direction I'm leaning right now, but I think uh, we can just go ahead and uh, get started coloring. Um, I'll start on, on beta first. I have one of my other pages open, I always have reference. Uh, this in here happen to have both of the characters together on one page, so I just have to have one page open, and that leaves me my the whole rest of the screen, uh, which is which is awesome. Uh, yeah. So, oops, wrong brush. There we go. Um, See so yeah, how the Kickstarter is going to start on the 14th of August, and uh, look in for the trade paperback to collect all all eight issues of the uh, the series and so uh, it'll be posted online um, so I think it's gonna be a total of a hundred and six pages I'm not a hundred percent on that um, not to check back when the Kickstarter is launched and we're gonna have all that all that info in there um, let me see as far as rewards um, where we're gonna have um, T-shirts, prints, and exclu exclusive covers, uh, original art from Andres, and um, I'm also gonna be offering my services. Um, if, from what uh, I was talking about with Quentin, the writer, the creator, um, at the $250 uh, reward tier, it's gonna be. Uh, a whole lot, a uh, crap ton of, of rewards, but it also in that, uh, um, also offering up a one-on-one -on -one coloring session with me. And that coloring session, it could be, uh, you know, a commission. I could be coloring, you know, if you're an artist, I could be coloring one of your pieces uh, during that while we chat. Or uh, if you're a colorist, um, we could do a portfolio review or maybe just a, a Q&A time. Uh, 
you want to hear, you know, tips uh, breaking into the industry and stuff like that. There's a lot of different things we can do, um, you know, to make it to make it worth that while. I mean, it'd be great, you know, years from now. You know, somebody come up to me randomly at a uh, comic convention and like, hey, I was that guy. You, uh, you know, I, I got to talk to you and you helped me break into the industry. That's not guaranteed. You know, don't don't put me down for you know guaranteeing anything. But uh, it's possible. You never know. Right now, I'm just trying to see. I have a neck piece on beta right here. I'm trying to get the uh, the right colors for. I've been asked before about my uh, work setup. Uh, currently I'm working on one of the newer generation iMacs. Um, the screen you're seeing now right here, I'm working on a uh, Cintiq. It's the... Oh crap, what is it? 21 UX, I believe. And it's pretty great. I, I, I love it. Um, and one of my, my co-workers got the uh, 24 inch and he used to have the uh, the 21 UX before and he upgraded well if you talk to him he says he downgraded um, even though it's HD and it's a lot bigger he says the uh, quality of the uh, the picture is so much better on the 21 UX so I'm gonna stick with this as, you know as long as I can let's see now I can close this one go back to our other page uh, so yeah, I got the so I got the new iMac going, and then to the right of that, I have the 21 UX, and then I also have a third monitor to the left of the iMac. That's always great for uh, pulling up uh, reference shots. Nothing I have to pick colors from, but uh, so that's always a pain. You know, I have to go across. The, the Cintiq to the iMac and then all the way over to the other monitor. Um, that'd be a pain in the ass. Uh, but, you know, just something I, I need to, to look at just to reference. Um, you know, it, it's great to have. Um, when, I, when I was first given the option to have that, I was like, I'll never, ever use it. So, you know, don't bother. But my boss got a, uh, uh, here at work, so I, I'm at the office coloring right now. Um, boss at the office said he got a great deal on monitors. Am I sure, you know, that I don't want one? And I was like, well, all right, fine. You know, you got a good deal on it. Then, you know, let's try it out. And it's pretty crazy. I actually got used to it a lot faster than I than I thought that I would. Um, let's see. Let's do her sweater now. So because I've, I've done... Uh, these elements uh, so many times already it's they're going by pretty quick nowadays and you know, I know the look I remember like, when I was first coloring her sweater before I was like oh man how am I gonna do this and uh, make it look decent now it goes by pretty quick yeah you know, it really helps once you have your uh, your palette set up I think Right now, I'm getting ready to start the next batch of pages. As I said before, I get the pages in uh, batches of five. Um, I think the next batch will put me up to page 60. So this one here is really moving along. I'm going to have uh, too much longer to go in, in the uh, in the series. So I'm not 100% familiar with the uh, with the storyline. So as you guys are reading it online, hopefully, um, I'm reading it too. I mean, I do get the scripts, uh, but I usually just check it, you know, oh, if I'm confused on something. Is uh, anybody talking in this panel? You know, what's the uh, what's the main focus? Uh, that some guy I don't recognize, who is this guy? You know, that, that type of stuff. I don't really want to read too much into the story. And I've always kind of been like that when... Uh, on the books that I'm working on. Uh, there, there's even been books I've turned down before. So I was such a fan of the book. And then 
getting to given the opportunity to color it, I was just <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't want to. There's the when the main book slit was like that was uh, Stormwatch for a wild storm. That was when uh, uh, was when Warren Ellis was writing it, which you know. I look back, I'm like, yeah, that would have been so cool to color that stuff. I think it was uh, Tom Rainey, uh, Mike, Michael Ryan had a couple issues penciling on that. Um, it's like, like Brian, Brian Hitch as well. That's some of the artwork. Oscar Jimenez did a couple issues uh, uh, penciling. But yeah, it was such a such a great read. And if you haven't if you haven't checked that stuff out, I think there's four. Stormwatch trade paperbacks and it leads right into uh, the authority. So yeah, if you haven't checked those out, definitely do. Um, awesome reads, and that's so I think uh, superhero comics should be done because <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. And uh, I was asked by my editor uh, what was I doing at the time. It's working on what works. Um, I think it. I think it was around that same time when Wildstorm was doing the Heroes Reborn stuff. And I was doing Avengers and Captain America for for them. Um, but yeah, the pay was a little bit cheaper, which didn't bug me because I was working a little bit cheaper than I usually did for, um, for uh, Avengers and, and uh, Captain America. But, you know, there are certain jobs that you want to take just because, you know, not only will it look good on your on your resume, you know, it might lead to other things, but also just because you're going to have fun doing it. Um, you know, I have no problem working for less on, on those types of projects. Um, but, yeah, so the pay was a little bit less, and I was just like, man, I, I don't even want to throw in a bid on, you know, on that stuff. You know, they were looking for a colorist and I was like, well, who else are you guys talking to? And they gave me the names and I was like, you know what? Yeah, they can have it. <laughs> you know, I enjoy reading it so much, you know, every month and I just didn't want any of the storylines to be ruined or anything that, yeah, I had to walk away. But, uh, you know, you'll come across that sometimes. Of course, you know, I was telling my friends about it and they thought I was stupid. <laughs> I don't know. You sometimes in your, your career you make some uh, crazy decisions. Not everybody's gonna not everybody's gonna understand. But you know, now that, that they've gotten you know, jobs working as a professional artist and stuff like that, now now they understand. So yeah, I think I was the the first out of my out of my friends to to get out and uh, work as a professional artist. But, uh, yeah, a lot now doing uh, uh, artwork for video games and advertising and stuff like that. Uh, let's see, just gonna go in through coloring up beta. Let's get into it here. You know, I thought when I first started using this brush to color, I thought I would get bored of it after a while, want to change it up, but I'm still really digging the look of it and how it works with uh, with Andre's lines. Get some more shadow down here, down here. So what else we can talk about for the uh, Kickstarter? I guess for updates on that. Like I said, it's going to be launching on the fourteenth of uh, of August, and for updates on that, you can go to uh, qamcomics.com. I'll, I'll put links for all this stuff in the uh, in the description, of course. Um, I see facebook.com. Uh, slash QAM Comics 
uh, twitter.com slash QAM comics, uh, QAM comics dot Tumblr. I think the hashtag Quentin uses is the uh, hashtag beta lives. And uh, yeah, we'll be able to check everything out, make sure everything gets, uh, you know, resent out and everything like that. Um, yeah, I think that looks good. Let's get lighter skin tones going. I'm coloring this up, I just kind of ran out of stuff to talk about. I had uh, wasn't able to respond. I had somebody uh, asking in the comments on one of the videos. I forgot which one it was. Asking for uh, translations for uh, Spanish on my videos. And sorry, man. <laughs> Unfortunately, my Spanish is is pretty bad. I could understand. Uh, to a degree, if it's spoken slow, I can pick out words here and there uh, and put the meaning together. But uh, yeah, responding, it's just yeah, I can't. Um, much less, much less write, you know, subtitles. Um, so yeah, apologies. Uh, yeah, most of my I grew up. Uh, as an Air Force brat, so a lot of my Spanish comes from Portuguese. Uh, grew up overseas in a group of islands uh, called the Azores. That's. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. That was a, a lot of fun growing up as a kid, uh, getting to see different countries and stuff like that. I think that's going to do it for beta. You know, highlight this look a little bit more. Yeah, I think that looks good. Oops. I'll do her eyes. That, oh, okay, I'm seeing colors in here. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, other stuff. Um, Still working on a tutorial. Somebody had asked before about tutorial for painting over line art to get a, uh, a painted look. And I haven't forgotten. I'm still working on that one. Um, it's just a matter of trying to you know, find the time to, to put it all together. Um, you know, a lot of these uh, tutorials, you know, they take a lot of, a lot of planning. So I've, I've never actually I've done something similar before, but uh, you know, just start trying to work out the process to how to explain it the easiest and get all my notes together. It's a matter of finding finding the right artwork and everything as well. Uh, it takes a little bit of time. It's not like I, I, I just hit record and then you know magic happens. Uh, so yeah. So where's our light source coming from on here? Let's see. It's from on top. Yeah. All right. Let's see.
I feel like I almost should have had this colored at first before I started. Uh, I just go over the finishing touches. Sorry, I just kind of ran out of stuff to talk about. Um, that looks pretty good. I always find the uh, skin tones take the longest, especially working working with this brush because females you always want to you know nice soft look to them. And this definitely is, isn't the, uh, <laughs> the the right brush for a soft look, so I always have to go in a little bit more and blend it. Oops. that highlight back here. Alright, um, do this part first. No wonder I didn't have the right uh, base color. I was jumping too much in uh, tone. There we go, that looks better. So one thing I learned over the years too is like don't uh, become too uh, uh, too attached. Uh, not not just for colors, but for any artwork in general. Uh, don't be afraid to to just delete everything you just did and, and do it over. Uh, you know, you already did most of the the hard work, the thinking when you first did it, and you know, chances are it'll come out better the second time you do it. So sometimes I remember just getting really upset, you know, when you lose. Of course, get upset when you lose like an hour or so of work, but you know, if it's fifteen minutes or something like that, you know, it's like ah, just do it over, kind of get over it quickly. Um, you know, like I said, chances are it's going to look better the second time you do it anyway. Let's get the highlight going here. Sure, you got the right base color first. Yep, sure enough, it was changed.
now the hanger. and add my highlight. Again, I just kind of want to highlight that crown where the light's going to hit the hair. Dodge at 30% just to get a little bit more highlight on it. And then same with her suit. I go a little bit higher, maybe 50% in this area. Let me see. Looks good. Um, I said I'm still at the office, so the phone might ring occasionally. Alright, so we have basic colors done. Now, let me add a little bit more depth to it. Uh, we're going to use my little trick multiply layer, that blue color. I get a soft brush. And all right. So, you gotta wait for that to happen. All right. Just kind of make it a little bit darker where she's meeting shadows and like down towards the bottom. To help push focus up, it's gonna help us out. I also wanna do just on the hair, add some depth to it. Oops. Make sure you're on the right layer, of course. So there we go. We do the same thing to beta on the other side here. So glad you're still here. What is that? Because I forgot to post my head. <laughs> I, I left the gym and just fucking walked right out. Nice. Like I said, I'm still at the office. So <laughs> people, people come in and out. Um, somebody's asking what I do nowadays and work in advertising. We're a third-party art studio. I'm in charge of the color department now. Um, 
Okay, so we got the depth in there. Um, let's mess with the background. We know we want a blue, and so we can find a nice blue we can all live with. Let's see. Keep it like that. Let me see how this one works out. Do a little bit, desaturate it, of course. Uh, darken it up a little bit. Pick that, we'll go to our uh, dry block brush. And lighten the color. Some green, we'll make purple. Let's keep it like that for now. Um, on this side, let's go desaturate it and darken it. Liking how that looks so far. With my color, lighten it. So I was saying before, a lot of it's going to be in the uh, adjusting afterwards phase. Like that. Let's adjust this blue here. I think that works pretty well. Um, see, there's some other type of effects I want to try out too. Uh, so let me save this real quick. And I take a look at some of my textures I have. A nice old book looking texture. Get this out of here.
Let's see. You can drop the saturation on that and see. I'm kind of digging that. Need some texture going on in there. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can get a uh, filter, clean that up a little bit. Here's another this splatter I have. Um, that's great. Like, go ahead and just build libraries of of uh, different stuff. You never know when you're going to use it or uh, what you can use it for. Let's see if I did that. White, throw it on overlay. I do it at like fifty percent. Yeah, it makes like a nice interesting texture in the background there. We will do a horizontal. You guys just complimenting the splatter that Andre's had back there. Um we'll put a layer mask on that. It's over there. Oops. That's right. Yeah, it's just in the background. Uh drop a little bit more. Just make it subtle. Uh 40%? Yeah, that looks good. Um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this cover. Sorry, I'm just thinking whether right, there should be something else, but I think I'll do another pass on top for highlights. Then I'll pop it a little bit more. I'll see how this looks in a second. And that's probably too much. I'll just lower the opacity a little bit more on that. More trick I'd like to try out. Um, delete that. Another layer on top of everything, an empty layer. I'll hold down my Alt, and I'm sorry, my Control key. And go down to Merge Visible. Oh, oops, didn't work. No, maybe it is my Alt key. There you go. Alt key and Merge Visible. Put everything in one layer. Um, do a blur of seven pixels, I guess. Throw that on overlay. Let's see how that looks. Uh, that might be a bit much. I'll drop it down to 20, 30%. I think it looks good. That's a nice little bit of contrast to it, I think. Uh, one thing I'd like to fix first. I'm looking at now. I could be. We could use. Okay, I got my brush. Just gonna overlay on 50. Just gonna draw on this uh, edge of these ribs.
Yeah, it looks a lot better. Has a little bit more depth to it. I think we can do the same thing on here. There you go. And with that, turn back on. It looks good. Save it. And there's the finished piece. Didn't take too long at all. Um, again, Kickstarter starting off on the August 14th. Uh, trade paperback. Let's make it happen, guys. <laughs> and uh, again, as always, uh, you can find my work on lumbage.deviantart.com. And um, yeah, I'll put all the links for all the other information up on the uh, description. And that's all I got for now. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.